That reenactment was done by Jared Jacobs as a birthday gift for his daughter. How did you get started? I mean, like, how did this become a thing? Jared is, I don't know, st- st- what, what do we call it? Stop motion? I just like to hear you stumble over it. What, what it? Stop just, motion? Uh, yeah, stop motion just, animation. Stop. And those many moments that we've been showing uh, all two weeks here on US Open Now. The creator, the mastermind behind those many moments, uh, Jared Jacobs, joining us on set here. We're pleased to be joined now live on Sports Center by Jared and Joby Jacobs. Frame by frame, I'm moving every single person and then toggling back and forth. And here we have him, Jared Jacobs. Welcome to the live. Hello. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me. Awesome. How are you doing? I'm just fine. Fine. Um, so yeah, we we saw some clips of you uh, right now. You are a stop motion video animator, right? That's and right. Um, yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit about how everything got started and, and how you came into this Lego video field that you're working in. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the most common question I get is if I was a Lego kid growing up and I didn't really have a lot of Lego. Um, I just, when I got older, I, uh, I, I think I was around 35 years old. I um, found some of my nephews Lego down in the basement and started kind of messing around with it and I recreated a Breaking Bad scene because that was my favorite TV show at the time. Mm -hmm. And I think I made it on Vine. So it wasn't even like a stop motion app that I used. I just kind of, oh, I always liked stop motion but I wasn't really sure how to do it. And then I posted it to my Instagram and then that next day um, some of the actors from the show had found it and so they had shared it on their accounts which were way bigger than Mm -hmm. my account at the time and so i started getting a bunch of followers and people who were big fans of breaking bad as well and and the act one of the actors from the show daniel moncada he encouraged me to keep making these and he thought that they were amazing and i was just like i have no idea what i'm doing Mm -hmm. here so i had to kind of figure it out pretty quick because i got a lot of attention really fast so i just kind of did that on the side just as kind of a creative outlet, I, I, I never thought that I would grow up to be a stop motion animator using Lego, but um, I kind of got better and better at it. And, and eventually I switched from doing TV episodes to sporting moments. And I think like the second video that I did just went like crazy viral all over the world. And, and then my life was just different after that. And, and big companies started reaching out and now I've been doing it full time for almost three years now that's so cool and it all started with just doing something for fun yep just messing around for uh, probably for almost two years it was just kind of my creative outlet whenever i felt like it i would make a stop motion scene Mm -hmm. um and it was typically around the show breaking bad i did a few other things that were a little bit different but um breaking bad was just something that i watched religiously and so um, it, it was, I don't know, I, it, it's kind of weird, the serendipity that brought me to where I'm at now. And now I do this for a living and I can't believe some of the things that I get to do just from playing with Lego. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Have you seen the new El Camino video, by the way? Yeah, yeah, I did see that movie. That was good. Yeah. It was really good. Um, Aaron Paul actually grew up in the town that I live in now. Oh, really? And so I've, I've met him before too. Oh, ah, cool. Um, so yeah, it's it's just kind of a crazy world how it all just kind of comes full circle. Yeah. So what what were you working with before you started working with this? Um, so the way that I got into video, I, I used to do rap rap videos every week. We called it Freestyle Friday, and it was just kind of me rapping about whatever I wanted mm-hmm. to. And that's where I got the name Gold Yeller from. Ah, right. I was a little bit older when I started rapping but i uh, that was something that i always liked doing too i've always been super creative with that type of stuff mm-hmm. and then when i started like making videos like rap videos that i would put out on youtube every week just because that was the only way that you could get them onto facebook i didn't know anything about youtube this was this is years ago yeah um 
And then I started kind of getting a following that way. Like people that I didn't even know were, were commenting on my videos and, and I've, I've taken down most of them now just because mm-hmm. they're kind of embarrassing to watch. Yeah. Um, but at the time that was what I liked to do every week was uh, just rap about whatever every, I, I think I did that for about three years and that was how I got right. into video. And then eventually I was like, I kind of want to get a little more serious about video. Mm-hmm. And so um, I went to VidCon, which is like a YouTube convention in Anaheim, California. Um, I reached out to one of the, the only person that I knew that did YouTube for a living. Mm-hmm. And he told me that if that's what I wanted to do, that I needed to go to VidCon. And so right. I went there for about six years. Mm-hmm. I didn't go last year. Last year was the first year that I didn't go. Um, just because it kind of got to the point where it wasn't really serving me anymore. Mm-hmm. But I did just get back from Vid Summit, which which was is way better than any VidCon I've ever been to. If if you've ever if if anybody's ever gone to Vid Summit, which is in Los Angeles, California, mm-hmm. um, it was it was awesome. Like it was just way better and 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 a lot more intimate than what VidCon is. VidCon's just a lot of like fans wanting to meet their favorite creators. This right. is like that are that are trying to figure out how to make a business out of this this crazy internet world Mm. that we live in and and a lot of people are really successful at it like Casey Neistat was there Peter McKinnon uh, Matt Diavella there was just like so many cool people cool creators that I've looked up to for a long time that I'm just in the same room with so yeah it was it was really cool but yeah that's kind of long story Mm. long story short I guess yeah and have you seen uh, a lot of um, like outcomes from going to events like that both going to events but also networking with other people just collaborating in general yeah i mean there's been a few collaborations that have come from it but mainly it's just about meeting the people and surrounding yourself with the people that are doing what you do um that's that's kind of the biggest thing that i get from it and becoming friends with those people and i mean at at first when i went there i was just i was kind of a a fan of these people too. I like, I remember the first time I met Casey Neistat, like I, I hope that he never remembers that because it was embarrassing looking (laughs) back on it, how I acted. But, um, yeah, you just, I mean, you, you look up to these people and then you meet them in real life and, and then they become your peers. And I mean, not saying that Casey Neistat even knows who I am, but I've had a few interactions with him and, Mm -hmm. and maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I don't, I don't really lose any sleep over whether or not he knows who I am, but it's just cool to be with those people that have huge followings yeah. and huge audiences. And and not that I have a huge audience, but I, my stuff's been seen all over the world many times. So I, I guess, um, yeah, it's it, it, as far as like making videos that a lot of people have seen, mm-hmm. I, I, I guess I'm one of the his peers for that. And not that I'm on his level at all, um, but it's just so cool to to meet those people and even people that are smaller creators mm. that that most people don't even know who they are. Like all those people are my type of people because that's what I do and that's and yeah. they understand kind of the things that I go through and and we're just you know that's just who you surround yourself with. Yeah, I I think that's uh, is super true. I I feel when I connect with with other people's people that are have come far into their their journey their creation journey or just starting out like i can feel when the people is thinking the same way as i do and when i like connect with them and then it it doesn't matter how far they have come if they have the same mindset at least they mu- totally. that's my experience it, from it like even even with the back and forth that we've had over the yeah. years um, just both of us being huge fans of Gary mm-hmm. Vaynerchuk. Um, and that's kind of what's brought us together. And now we're like, you're in Sweden, I'm in the United yeah. States and, and we're just talking over yeah. the internet and like, you're doing a YouTube live with it. It's just crazy mm-hmm. how you can connect with these people. And like the, a lot of people are like, social media is fake. Like it's not, you're not even really like, you just need to have face to face with people, but social media is real. Like this is real. The conversation that you and I are having right yeah. now never would have happened without social media so it's just yeah it's just kind of crazy the world that we live in now and 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 surrounding yourself with those creators even though you're not there even though you are probably aren't going to fly to vid summit 
because it's around the world for you, mm. like you still are connected with these people and these people are also your peers as well. Yeah. I, I, I like when uh, people refer to like meeting some someone physical to the real world. Uh, but nowadays it's almost more people that you know online that than, than you actually meet. And a lot of people I am good friends with right now is people that I've met online and then like taking it taking it offline from there and actually uh, actually meet them in person. So Well, in a funny story that happened to me from Vid Summit, there was a guy that I had met just kind of talking with other people and we kind of became friends we hung out over the week and um the last night i was going i was staying at my friend's house in orange mm. county which is about a half hour away so i was going to travel back to orange county that night and he's like well he's like i'm flying out tonight so he's like you can just have my hotel room if you want and i was like okay and then it turned out that he couldn't fly out that night so he came back and he was he's like oh, i might need my hotel room mm. back but i was like well i'll just sleep on the couch because he was staying in a suite so it's like somebody that i barely yeah. met i end up like sleeping on their couch at their hotel and it's and i never would do that otherwise but these people you have yeah. that connection with and you're like you understand each other and so it felt like he'd been a friend for for years but really like we'd known each other for like two or three days and then I'm crashing on his couch. Mm. And, I, and, and I know you've had experiences like that too, where you're just yeah. like, I don't even really know these people, but like we're hanging out with each other and like I'm sleeping on their, in their spare bedroom or whatever. Mm. And, and like, I would never do that otherwise. But even with Uber, you're like, I'm getting into a car with a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I just assume that he's going to take me where I want to go. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty crazy how, how things work now. Yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, you mentioned earlier also meeting Gary. And that's f for the people that don't know, that's quite an interesting story. So can you tell us more about how you came in contact with him? Yeah, I'll tell you all about it. Um, so if you go, if you if you look up on YouTube, Bubble Hockey with Gary V, that it tells the whole story, but I'll just mm. tell you, I'll give you it. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Um, he was, Gary was at a, Gary's somebody who David and I have both been huge fans of for a long time. And, and Project Vayner is how we've connected. Um, and, and I really admire what you do with Project Vayner. I just think it's going to, I think it's so cool. And I think eventually, <clears throat> excuse me, one day you'll be one of his videographers and it'll just be cool for me to go to Vayner and be like, David, what's yeah. up? And we've known each other for years. Yeah. But here's what happened with Gary. He was doing a keynote here in Boise, Idaho, and nobody even really knew about it. But my friend knew that I was a big fan of Gary. And so he got me into the same room, even though it was like a private event. He got me in there somehow. And so when Gary did Q&A, um, I had learned so much from him over the years that I just wanted to thank him. And so I, I got up and I told him that I was just really grateful. I didn't have a question for him because usually people are asking him questions on how they can grow mm -hmm. their business, whatever. And I was just like, I don't need anything from you. Like I've already gotten everything I need. And I just wanted to thank you for, for all the, for basically giving me the permission to, to pursue my passion, to do what, it, what I love every day. And then um, I knew that he was really competitive. And so um, after that, I was just like, if you ever want to play bubble hockey, I'll destroy you. Because mm. I had played bubble hockey growing up my whole life, just kind of as a funny thing. And then he was like, well, first of all, where do you live? And I'm like, I'm, I live right here. We can go down the street. I know a place where we can play. And so the crowd kind of laughed at yeah. that. And then, and then he was like, you know what I'm going to do based on what you said? He's like, I'm going to fly you out to... New York and you can spend a day at Vayner Media and we'll play bubble hockey and we'll see what's up. And I was just awestruck. Like I hadn't in my wildest dreams, that wasn't what I had planned would happen. That was like best case scenario by far. And so and so like five months later I finally got to go out to New York and played him in bubble hockey and I ended up losing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even even though I told him I'd beat him. And um and then he afterwards he said he's like i need to give you a rematch because he's like you're really good at this and he's like i i didn't know if you're gonna be good or not and so he's like you deserve a rematch mm -hmm. but then he got caught up with something else that guy is so busy i've never seen anybody 
so busy in my entire yeah. life. He's got like four assistants and like three or four videograph- videographers and people that just follow him around every day. Like I'm, he is on another level, yeah. but he gets it. Like he, he, I mean, you and I both know he is the master of this. Mm. Like he's, he's figured it out and he just keeps figuring it out. We, we talked earlier about how once you think you've got something figured out, it mm. changes. And, and Gary's just constantly changing with it. And so it's, but yeah, if you want to look up, if you want to see the whole story, go look up that video. And it's a, uh, it's something that still gives me goosebumps yeah. when, when I watch it, it's like, I can't believe I got to do that. My friend flew out to New York to meet me there and he videoed the whole thing. And I'm so grateful that he did. Um, Cause it was just such a cool experience. And then, and then when I was just in New York recently, I got to go hang out at VaynerMedia again. And then I felt like I was, you know, part of that family. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and that's what it feels like. Even those, like all those people that work there are just like super close, especially on Gary's team. Um, so it was just really cool to see that and, and to kind of know those people now. And, um, it, it, but, but the first time I was there, I was awestruck. I was just like, I can't believe that I'm at VaynerMedia for the, for the whole day. It was so crazy. Yeah. Like I, I watched that a couple of times and I kind of, yeah gives me goosebumps every time <laughs> so yeah it's really cool well, and somebody that i met there um zane he had say, a similar experience happen to mm-hmm. him where he he was helping gary with some stuff um just kind of on the back end and then he they had a q a and and he was telling gary kind of what he's been doing and and then it's, you know he basically was just like yeah i want to work for you and, and gary's like you want to will you move to new york And he's like, yeah. And he's like, all right, let's do yeah. it. And so now Zane's on his team. And then when I was there, I didn't know who Zane was, but he came up and introduced himself and we kind of figured out who each other were. And so now we're friends just from one interaction that mm. we had at VaynerMedia. But had he not come and introduced himself to me, I never would have known who he yeah. was. So he, I mean, he was, he's somebody that really lives what Gary mm. preaches. And so the fact that he came up was just super cool. But that's kind of what I what I envision that will happen with you is there'll be one moment where you're like, this is my yeah. moment. And then you'll tell him about project mm-hmm. Vayner. And, and if he doesn't already know about it, he'll be like, Oh yeah, this is David. And then you'll be like, I, you know, it's my dream to come work for you. And he'll be like, all right, let's yeah. do it. And then all of a sudden you're on, you're on your way to, to New York to go work for Gary. I, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm excited to see the moment. because I I'm, I'm sure it'll mm-hmm. happen. He's such a good guy. And, Like, I just think it'll be so cool. Like, I look forward to seeing that where, where you're just like, really? Yeah. I'm coming to New York <laughs> from Sweden, and and then you and then you're living in New York. Yeah. I'll come out and visit for sure if that happens. When that happens, yeah, let's say exactly. when it happens, we'll put it out into that the. That would be really cool. We'll, we'll manifest it into yeah. happening. Also, I I've seen the video with the saying that you talked about, and I think he helped helped them out with the first in line group on uh, Facebook uh was like a moderator yeah, there exactly for right. half a year or something and uh like when i've 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 read and seen about people that are working there and how they got there like there's so many different ways they have taken to to get there but one thing i feel like they all have in common is that they are thinking outside of the box and they, they are trying to provide value and trying to do something that no one else does it's not just applying with a with a paper uh and uh yeah typically i mean the people that i've run mm. into that have cool stories they yeah they, they they didn't just apply for a job at vayner media and then got got yeah. hired like they totally think outside the box and that's how they somehow end up working for gary mm. Um, and, but yeah, that's, that's what I anticipate is going to happen with, with David. Yeah. I think that's going to happen. I hope you're right. <laughs> I think, I think I am right. And I can't wait to see what actually happens. And, and even like, even the longer that it draws out, the more anticipation builds up mm. where you're just like, how is this going to happen? Yeah. Cause I know this is going to happen yeah. someday. And maybe it's like on your hundredth episode, all of a sudden he sees one and you're just like, mm. uh, Gary's flying me out to New York to go work for him. And it'll, uh, yeah, I'm 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 super stoked for it, man. I think it's so cool what you're yeah. doing. And he's he finds talent. That's the thing is he 
he has pretty good mm-hmm. intuition on on hiring people on the spot. And I know D Rock doesn't like it when he does that because some people don't work yeah. out. But but the people that do work out, he's like, D Rock, that's how you yeah. got hired. You know? Why <laughs> like why why are you getting upset over this? That's how you got your job here. And even talking with like Andy K, same thing. He's just like he they all have just super cool stories where you're just like, how did you guys end up here? I don't think I could ever live in New York. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have those aspirations to ever work for Gary, but uh, it's just so cool that I actually know him, and then I got to have, like, five yeah. minutes of his time where we were just, like, it felt like we were best buddies for yeah. five minutes, you know? It was, it was crazy. I, I also know that he had said about hiring that... Uh, um that hiring is guessing, but firing is knowing. Um, I mean, that's yeah. so true. You you need to try before before you know. And I think that you can apply that to to like content creation as well with everything that you think about and you're not sure if this is going to lead somewhere. Um, the best way to learn is just to try it out and, and learn from the mistakes along the way, I think. Yeah, and, and I mean, that's like what you're doing right now where you've got like a DSLR camera set up and you're like just watching your evolution yeah. of your content getting better and better. Like the first time we collaborated on something, I think it was your first collaboration that you ever did. Yeah, I and it was so. it was advice that Gary gave. Yeah, you, you know, where he's like, you need to reach out to people and collaborate. And he said like a couple other things. I think I remember like it was like title thumbnail and collaboration are the keys to YouTube. And he's totally right. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's how we know each other now is through a collaboration that we did. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, as you were speaking, um, I was showing the thumbnail of, uh, episode 25, uh, because you did the, a short intro to that episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I really fun. appreciated that. Uh, yeah, it was cool. I was happy to do it. And it was a time where I didn't have like a project that I had to have yeah. done. And so I was like, yeah, I can do this. And and that was that was also just uh, like um, it, w- it was nothing planned from the start because you I think you went live on Instagram and then I d- just jumped in and commented and then we started talking after that. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you. I, I used to go live on Instagram quite a bit, and you jumped on a live, and I was like, this is David. And I was like, I think he's from Sweden. And then you said something, and then I was like, yep. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And then and then we went live, and that's how, that's how we connected at first. And then I don't even think you asked me to help you with that. I think I just volunteered yeah. that. I was like, you know what we should do? We should, we should animate you yeah. in Lego form doing your intro and, and that's what we did and then you did like some stop motion thing with like matryoshka yeah. <laughs> dolls or something like some were there, was it like the washington capitals yeah, or exactly. something <laughs> yeah that was so funny that I, I i need to go back and watch that episode because yeah. I, I still remember that stuff that's so funny i haven't thought about that in yeah. a long time I, I was just surprised when uh, i jumped in and you said that you knew about the vlog already <laughs> yeah, because cause you, like, back then, I don't even think you had very many subscribers. Oh. You were just, like, super yeah. small, and you were like, the fact that he knows who I am means I'm doing something yeah. right. And you are. You totally are. And I think I think you should reach out to people on Gary's mm-hmm. team as well. I think having these types of interactions with guys on his team would be would be really cool, too. Like, I bet you Zane would jump on one of these yeah. with you, because he's just, like, the such a genuinely nice mm. person caleb was the same way jason like everybody yeah. there tyler they're mm. all just like super nice people even though like new york's kind of known as like the hustle and bustle and everybody just wants wants to know what's in it for them those guys aren't like that at all they're I, I, even though they're super busy like they make time zane would be a perfect guy for you to get on mm. this i think i think that would be a i would i would definitely watch that yeah. one because uh his story is just it hit, that's another one that gives me goosebumps when I'm like, dude, I remember the feeling that I had when that happened, but to to take it to the next level and actually get to go work on Gary's team yeah. and be connected with him. And then they even did a piece of content around how how they how he got to work there and it was just so cool. I think that Zane is actually following me on Instagram. Yeah. Zane is? So 
Yeah, you should reach out to him. He's he's awesome. You'll you'll really like Zane. Yeah. Do you talk to him at all? Yeah, yeah, from time to time. So Yeah, he's such a good dude. Maybe I should just make a, a shout out to him and, and say that if you're ever interested in being uh, a guest on the live, so let me know. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll jump in too. If you do that, I'll jump yeah. in and I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll co-sign for you. I'll be like, yeah, cool. you should go on it. <laughs> David's awesome. And then and then you get you know it's who knows how it's gonna yeah. end up. I just think it's so cool what you're mm. doing and and I I admire it because like man. you like the fact that you can you're coming in so crystal clear and I'm just like this is crazy. This is never something. I would have taken the time to figure out how to do, but this is probably something that I should be doing as well. But I'm like, I probably won't ever do it. You yeah. know what I mean? I'll, I just, but I'm, I was happy to come on when you asked me to come on. I was like, absolutely, man. I love coming on these yeah. things. Cool. I really appreciate it. And talk about, um, like your progress with the stuff that you have done. I saw some interview where you talked about how you went from like six FPS per second to 12 FPS. Uh, just with the uh, the photos that you take for these videos. Yeah, so it's, so anybody that doesn't know what stop motion animation is, it's basically you just take a picture, you move them just incrementally, and then you take another picture, and then you compile all those pictures together, and it just looks like it's an actual movie. But typically, um, film is shot in 24 frames per second, but to do 24 frames for one second of video takes forever when you're doing what I'm doing. So mm. I had it condensed down to six frames per second because sometimes I'll do like college football games or like basketball games. And so there's a bunch of people that I have to move. So if I did 24 frames per second, it would take me forever to do it. And so I started out doing six and then I went up to eight and then I've gone up to 12 and I kind of fluctuate in between eight and 12. Um, frames per second so it so basically it takes 12 pictures to get one second of video and, and usually the videos that i do like for a 30 second video takes anywhere from like 50 hours up to like 100 hours just and and it's just like hyper focused too and i'm not i'm kind of all over the place mm -hmm. with uh with my attention i i don't i can't really pay attention to two things for too long but when i'm doing stop motion it's almost like an out of body experience where like everything kind of goes away and you're just like so focused it's just like laser focus and so it's just so it's a it's a great outlet for me especially being kind of add mm -hmm. all over the place um is it it helps me to those creative outlets just help you like zoom your focus in on on what you're trying to accomplish yeah it's interesting that you mentioned that about focus because i can uh, i can relate to that feeling when i'm editing and a lot of times when I'm like publishing stuff on social media or I'm doing other stuff, I can jump from from thing to thing. But when I'm really down in an edit, I could like sit there for hours and just focus on that and, and kind of uh, forget everything around me. Uh, yeah, and time just kind of fades yeah. away. You're just like, where did all that time go? And you, you're like zoned mm -hmm. in for like six hours and you're like... I just did this for six hours and I haven't stood up, you know, I need, I need to get up and walk around yeah. so I don't like, get a blood clot in my leg or something. Or, or do you usually feel that uh, you are um, like super concentrated on, on the things that you do or do you more do it on autopilot and like while you're thinking about something else? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to like, like you said, like posting on social media, I can I can multitask and do things mm -hmm. like that. But when I'm like, when I'm editing video or when I'm making a stop motion video, um, yeah, I have to be like super focused on it. Otherwise, like you'll have an idea that comes to you. And if you don't act on it right away, that idea is going to go away if you didn't write mm -hmm. it down. Um, so it's like you, you almost feel like that time just keeps going away cause you're like, I have to do this. And now I just had an idea for this and maybe I can try this. And it's always just like challenging yourself creatively. Um, and even like to get to the point where you're at right now with mm -hmm. this, where at first it probably took a long time to figure out how to do it. Yeah and what you're supposed to do. And, and I'm sure that you'll, you're still trying to figure it out, mm. but it just looks so good right now. And it's like, this is, 
This is essentially you having a podcast yeah. from Sweden, yeah. which is nuts. The fact that we're just talking all the way across the world is, I think it's so cool. Yeah. Uh, and it all just started with the, uh, um, just starting with something and then try to add like one layer on top every time I did it. So, and that's really something that I've gotten from Gary and learned from him to like, when you have an idea, go out and do it and then learn from, from the result and try to analyze and adapt along the way, instead of trying to perfect the idea. Because when, when you have gotten that far that you feel like now, now I really have uh, the result that I want and you publish that then I mean you could have done like 10 times more during that time well and that's something that I struggle with too that I know that I should do better at is actually trying to figure this stuff out like you you become romantic about how you got to where you are and so like I don't post a ton of stuff on my social media like I, I, I'm not super active on Instagram I try to post on stories as much as I can but as far as like my Instagram feed, that's kind of become my portfolio of the work that I've done. And so I don't touch it as much as I used to. Like I just alone and I don't post things that maybe I maybe I should, you know. And, and so, I mean, with the way the algorithms work, like I don't really try to grow as much as it, it's almost like sometimes we fear success more than we do failure. Like we're worried what will happen mm -hmm when all the success comes and so we're like more afraid of what our light is than our darkness i think there's a, mm -hmm. a quote from a movie that's that's like that and, it, and it's totally true like we fear the light more than we fear the darkness and it should be the other way around like we should just do and so that's yeah. that's another thing that i look up to you for is is you just doing stuff and and figuring it out as you go and you and i talked about this before we jumped on the live where where it was like with social media you have to you yeah. can't perfect it because as soon as you think you've got it perfected it changes mm. so you kind of just have to figure it out and and that's how gary grew as much as he did like he's now he has like over six million followers on instagram i remember when he was like a hundred thousand followers you know and then yeah. he got serious about it and he's like he started doing like first in line and mm. and the 60 set or the 60 second club where you yeah. had to like comment because he understood the algorithm and he was like this is how i'm gonna hack growth and mm -hmm. so he would give away t-shirts or shoes or whatever if you would comment in the first 60 seconds of him posting mm -hmm. and then it shared his stuff to more people and now he's huge you know where he he knows what he's doing and that's something that i should probably do more of but at the same time i'm kind of like do i want to get a huge following because then you also have to maintain that and i feel like i need to like connect with the people that follow what i do because i don't really look at them as fans i just look at them as people that want to connect and that's kind of what social media has has bridged that gap where where anybody is accessible like you can access anybody and and maybe mm -hmm. one day gary will be on this or maybe you'll be doing this from new york and and mm. and after you've grown a big following then he's like on your show and you're just like i can't believe that i'm actually sitting down interviewing this guy that would be the ultimate guest right oh yeah that'd be, <laughs> that would be so cool yeah um or even if you were his guest mm. like imagine if you were his guest on the on his podcast yeah. you'd just be like i can't believe i'm here and then he's telling your story and you're just like I just decided this is what I wanted to do and, and did it, you know, mm. and how many, what episode is this? How many episodes are you into Project Vayner? Uh, 66 today. 66. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That's so cool. And how often do you do it? So once per week. So it's, I think it's one and a half year or something now. So what made you start? Um, actually, I've been wanting to to have a YouTube channel and to start vlogging for for a long time and uh -huh. I Gary kind of helped me to to push away the like perfectionist and to just start with something and I think that's also what inspired me to to name it Project Vayner because I wanted to like show that it's a journey that I'm documenting and not just like a final product because 
I I rather like post something and show that this is where I am right now and then next week okay this is where I am right now so you can like see the development and hopefully after doing it for a while inspiring others to to just start with their thing whatever it is and then just learn along the way and and also like the reason of of uh, of having that goal to work there is there is actually a, a couple of things behind it, but I've always had a dream to to live in New York, uh, and also everything that Gary has taught me by his content, and uh, it would be super fun to like be around him and and see how he is working, and also like the team Gary V and everyone around around uh, Gary. I feel that they are so ambitious and creative, and they're really and they really have the right mindset and they help each other and i think that i would really grow both as a creative but also as a person just hanging around with them every day so i just feel like trying to be in the right environment instead of trying to have like the perfect title or the perfect salary or, or anything i just want to like feel like i am around people that i want to to be around well, and I think what's cool about it too is if, like, I know you don't have kids yet, but like thinking about your posterity and like what kind of message you're going to send to them, you can be like, hey, look, like I documented this whole journey. I had mm -hmm. a giant goal that I never thought I would achieve and look at me now, like I, by, by just doing the work and putting in the time, now I'm doing what I love every day and you're mm -hmm. already doing what you love. Like even yeah. if you even if you never do work for Gary, like getting to do what you do yeah. is what a lot of people aspire to do now. Mm. So doing that from like from Sweden, there's probably not a ton of people that do what you do over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or if, or if they do, they don't do it as well as you do it. <laughs> well, we we talked about uh, this yesterday that I uh, I. I felt like I always had this goal of working with this, but it wasn't, or I think we talked about it, but it wasn't possible like uh, just 15 years ago. So I couldn't really define define it. I mean, social media didn't even exist when I was 10, 12 years old. So, right. but I always been interested in, do, in like creating micro content. And I think that's, um that's kind of the message that i want to do with everything everything that i do to just like follow your your inner child and ask yourself like what did you like to do when you were a kid and no one paid you to do anything you can just go out and do whatever you want like what did you do then and then like continue to do that and try to make money on that like even the 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 whole esports thing that wasn't uh, a a career path that someone could take 20 years ago but now it's possible so right yeah no i remember playing video games and and being told that i needed to go outside mm. and stop playing so many video games and now parents are like encouraging their kids to keep playing video games because they're like this could make you a lot of money yeah. probably more so than you becoming like some kind of professional athlete yeah It'll, you'll be a professional gamer and it, yeah, it's just crazy. I, when I go speak at schools, um, usually I'll tell the kids, um, that they probably don't know what they want to be when they grow up because whatever they're going to be when they grow up hasn't been invented yet. Mm. You know what I mean? If yeah. you think about that, you're like most, like we always were like, Oh, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer or a firefighter or whatever. Mm. Um, and that was just the career paths that you were supposed to choose. Nobody really talked about entrepreneurship. Yeah. Like, like Gary talks about it all the time. He's like kids that wanted to be entrepreneurs when he was growing up and when I was growing up were considered to be losers. Yeah. You know, they weren't, it was like, well, these kids aren't good at school and so they're never going to amount to anything. Mm. And, and, and it's the opposite. It's like you look at Gary now and being a, a poor, a poor student, a poor athlete, he, now he's like hanging out with all these people who are super successful in those fields and they want to be around him. And it's, yeah, it's just crazy to see how it all, how it all comes together. And, 
and um yeah i th- i think if you do what you want to do like for a living mm-hmm. that's that's success yeah. to me if you can do you can decide what you get to do every day like that's a huge success regardless of how much you get paid mm-hmm. to do it if you're doing what you love it's like there it's it's really hard to describe but it's just it's just amazing and and everybody can do that like there's no like can't should be a swear word that was one thing that my dad taught me is he was like don't say can't like any time i'd be like oh i can't do that he'd be like can't should be a swear word in your vocabulary like that should be the worst word that you could ever say mm. because you can do anything that you want and and that's something that he instilled in me from as a child you know that's that's something that i tell my children i'm like don't say can't um cuz you can you can do whatever you want to do and and sure there's different circumstances and people have a a bad hand dealt to them in life but there's examples of everybody that that started out from nothing and now they're doing exactly what they want to do so i mean if you really want to do it um sometimes you just have to give yourself permission and tune out the people who are telling you that you can't do it and that's one thing that i think a lot of people lean on gary for is that permission and so when i when i got to talk to him for the five minutes that I got to talk to him, I was just like, thank you for giving me that permission. Because my parents would never would have said, you know what you should do when you grow up? You should make Lego videos and recreate sporting mm-hmm. events. Like nobody would have ever thought that that was a thing that you could yeah. do. And even me, I would have been like, if you would have told me when I was in college that, that's, that this is what I was going to do for a living, mm-hmm. I would have thought you were crazy. I was like, I'd be like, there's no way that people are going to pay money for me to make videos using mm-hmm. Lego. But it's what I do, and it's, I mean, I love it, and this is the most success I've ever had in my life, both getting to do what I want and from a monetary standpoint, you know, where I get paid to do, I somehow figured out a way to, to make this make a living out of this and support a family. Yeah. And I mean, as you talked about uh, with uh, uh, with my vlog, that, that must be inspiring as well for your kids, like seeing how you are growing with, with doing what you love. Oh yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it is. And I I wish that I documented more, just not not so that I could put it out on YouTube and get like a huge following, but more so for my kids. Even though they've seen kind of the evolution of what I do now, um they're still young. So to be able to show that to them later on in life where they're just like, "Wow, dad really did what he set out to do." Like he had, I mean, he and not that I knew that this was what I wanted to do when I decided this is what I want to do, you know, I went for it. I had to quit my day job like two and a half years ago because I tried doing it on the side. I was like, this is never going to pay the bills. And I, I, I don't know why I told myself that because I got to the point where I was like, I either need to go do this full time or else I'm not going to sleep anymore because I was trying to do both. And you can't be what Gary says, half yeah. pregnant. And that's what I was trying to do. And so I made the leap and the first year was kind of sketchy it would be like contracts would come in and then i didn't know where what i was going to do for two Mm. months and so i would just make things and put them out online not even getting paid for them but whenever those would blow up and go viral then that would get me more work and Mm. so it's it's kind of like sometimes you have to put stuff out there for free that you spent a ton of time on not knowing what's going to come from it and then things come from it that you didn't even anticipate and i never would have dreamed that this like this is what i'll show you my studio it's kind of a mess but like this is what i get to do like did stuff for the u.s open there's like a nascar setup there's a music video that i'm making here and it's just it's all just like my whole entire studio just feels like a lego tsunami hit this place and (laughs) and i'm trying to swim in it you know so so when you started doing it you you weren't sure you will be able to uh to 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 do it full time but you still like took the leap and started and just hope for the best basically Yeah I remember one of the first interviews that I did with the local news channel I I remember saying to the person interviewing me that there's I'm, it's not like I'm going to make this a full time thing like I'm not going to quit my day job for this was what I said. And then less than a year later, I was quitting my day yeah. job because I was like, this, this potentially could make more money than what I'm making mm. now. 
and and if I don't do it, I'm always going to look back with regret. And that's another thing that Gary talks about is is not having regret. Go spend a day at a old folks home and see the the regret in some of those people's eyes, and it will make you a lot more motivated to do what you want to do, so that you don't have to have regret. Whether it's your kids that you're talking to, or just somebody that's your caretaker when you're old, you don't want to have to have regret. And that's one of the things that scares him. And that, and that scared me too. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to look back and be like, well, what if I would have just gone full time doing this, you know, and, and then be working a job that I didn't necessarily love. It's not that I didn't like my job. I, I really liked my job. I had a really good job, but I didn't love it. And so to do something that you love, like not everybody gets to do that. That's something that's a privileged thing. That's a privilege that I don't take for mm-hmm. granted that I get to do. I get to get up in the morning and do exactly what I want to do. Even if I'm working for clients that are telling me what scene to recreate, I still get to choose whether or not I want to do that or not. They're, like I say no to more things than I say yes to by far. Mm. And so I, I, to, to have that problem is just amazing. I don't know how long it's going to last, but I never thought it would last this long. And, and every time that I get a new project, it just seems like it gets bigger and bigger and get to do things that I never would have dreamed of. Like I, I got to take my mom to the U S open and watch mm. tennis and she's a huge tennis fan. And it was just unreal for me to see her reaction to it. Like that was something that she never thought that she'd get to yeah. experience. And, and I got to afford her that opportunity and, and it was just kind of a payback for all the opportunities that she afforded me growing up. Cause she, you know, was a great mom. And, and so to be able to do that kind of in, in the, twilight of her mm. life um it was just so cool it was it, that's an experience that i'll never forget and i and i just got to do it because of, of pursuing what i was passionate about and also i think an a important message here is that it's never too late either i mean what's how old are you now i'm 41, 41 yeah, and i'm you, a 41 year old man yeah and you've done this for a couple surrounded of years surrounded by lego yeah and i didn't own any lego three three and a half years ago. I didn't like not one brick. And so for it to go to where it consumes my Mm. life now to, because Lego is an expensive thing. Like it it wasn't something that I could have afforded back then, but now it's like, I have budgets for Mm. Lego where I just keep getting more and more. And you know, anytime I bring home more Lego, my wife's like, (laughs) what are you doing? But now that I have a studio, um, I have a little more leeway where she she doesn't question my decisions as much as, as when I was working out of my home, because I worked out of my home for two years, mm. where at one point I was taking over the whole kitchen table, and we had to eat somewhere <laughs> else besides the kitchen table. So it was um, just having a supportive yeah. wife has been, I mean, that's that's basically the person who really gave me permission. Mm. We talk about Gary giving me permission. If you really want to talk about who gave me permission, it's my yeah. wife not questioning what I was doing, even when I was like making rap videos and and thought that I wanted to be a rapper for a living. Like, I'm sure she just looked at me like, what are you thinking? This is a crazy person that I married. But, but she let me figure it out on my own, you know, and I realized that isn't the life that I want to live. And that's not necessarily what I want to do. I I still enjoy the music side of it. But it's that wasn't really what I wanted to do. But I had to figure that out. And it led me to where I'm at now. So even like your failures can sometimes lead you to success that you never dreamed of. So everybody's always so afraid of the word failure, but failure is what I look to, like I look forward to failures. I like to fail at things. I It was cool that I got to go to New York and, and I ended up losing to Gary at bubble hockey. Like that, some people could look at that as a failure. I looked at it as what can I take out of this? And so that's kind of what we spun the whole video into. It's like winners win even when they lose. That's 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 what I got out of it because surrounding yourself with those winners is 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 winning. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. And um, taking a step back, you talked about uh, but the, but the family and your wife supporting you. Uh, how does your how does your days look when you are doing these videos because you said you you done them you did them from home first and now you have a studio for it do you is it like a regular job where you go there like nine to five or 
like how how does the the schedule look like it's no it's not i wouldn't say it's a regular job sometimes i'll show up to the studio at noon sometimes i'll do work from home um but when i'm like on a project that i have a deadline for that i have to get done sometimes it'll be you know i get in to the studio at nine o'clock and i don't leave until 10 o'clock at night or even like midnight um because i have to get it done so i mean being an entrepreneur isn't as like glamorous as as what some people may make it out to be like sometimes you actually have to work way longer than i would if i had just a regular nine to five job where i could just go home at the end of the day and spend time with my family but but being able to take a week off whenever you want to and you know if if you're to the point where you're making enough money that you can afford that it's just I mean, there's nothing like it to be able to like if if I'm not having a good day and I, I want to go golfing or something, I can just leave. I can go watch a movie if I want. So, it, I mean, it's cool to have that kind of freedom. Um, and that usually comes along with making money doing what you're doing, because if I wasn't making money doing this, I wouldn't have that type of freedom. Um, but, I, yeah, I never thought that I would get to this point mm. where like I, I liked working for other people. I don't necessarily like being my own boss there. There are perks to being your own boss, but there's also downsides to it as well. Sometimes I wish that I could work a nine to five and just go home at the end of the day. But then would I be doing something that I love doing? You know, if I if I did, if I really loved my job, I probably wouldn't it probably wouldn't be there nine to five. I'd probably be there even later than that. So, I mean, it's it's a trade off, yeah. but it's also um, sometimes my 13 year old daughter will come in and help me organize my leg oak because I'm not the most organized person. And so being able to work with my yeah. daughter like as her first job is just so cool and she's just like dad you don't even have to pay me and i'm like well i have to pay you something like i don't i don't want i don't want this to become a job for you but at the same time like i want you to realize that you can make money doing things that you didn't think that you could make money doing you know it, it, maybe it's gonna spark some kind of entrepreneur mm -hmm. in her where that's what she decides that she wants to do i don't know i don't I don't get my self-esteem tied up in whether or not my kids are super mm. successful at what they do or not. Like if they're doing what they want to do, whether that's like staying home and watching their kids, whatever it is, like uh, that's a success for me. If I, if I can be the type of father that, that gave them the permission to do that, then, uh, then I'll, I'll be super happy. And, and do you feel uh, that uh, now when you have the studio that it helps that you can kind of leave the the work there and go home and spend time with your family that you have like two separate locations for it yeah yeah absolutely i recommend if if you do stuff like that it's i mean, I mean it's cool to be able to say you work from home but then at the same time it's easy to get distracted at home mm. it's nice to be in a spot where you can go and dedicate your day to a full day of work and then you can come home and feel that sense of I accomplished what I set out to do and now I can relax. Whereas if it's, if my studio is in my home, I feel like I'm constantly half, like I'm on to the next project or I'm starting to build for something else. And it's not like Lego isn't like it's, it's my job and it's there all the time. So it's nice to be in a place where I, where I don't have to, where I can leave it at the end of the day and not have to think about it, even though I'm still usually thinking about Lego most of the time it's 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 crazy when once you start dreaming yeah. about Lego stuff it you're like wow this is <laughs> not what I expected as a 41 year old man <laughs> I didn't think my life would be this so way. So when you're dreaming about different scenarios it's actually Lego figures instead of real humans. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes yeah sometimes it's, uh, it's things that I can build yeah. or or mini figures that I have to customize and. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's the fact that I even still dream about that stuff is is cool to have those types of dreams. Um, but yeah, it's weird. I never thought that I would be dreaming yeah. about Lego stuff when I was a grown man. And I'm still a little curious about like the the detailed part of the videos. Uh, I know that you have like a lot of different heads that you switch to get different. Uh, Face yeah, I've got, I've got a and... whole bag. I've got a whole bag of heads right here, where it's just like right. all the different, like all the different races that you can mm -hmm. think of. There's yellow, there's white, there's dark, there's light. 
skin. Um, yeah, it, for me, like those types of details really matter. So having to switch and making people look like they're talking, like it takes a lot of time to switch those heads and and kind of sync it up to where it actually looks like that person's talking. But it just like once you're finished with it, it just feels so mm. good that you're like, I made that and that's cool. But I'm also looking all the time at ways that I can improve. Like how can I improve yeah. that? Like I'll watch my own videos more than anybody else will ever watch them. And and it's not because like I'm so proud of what I've done. It's because I'm like, how can I make this better mm. for the next one? Because because you always want to be continuously improving w- what you do, whether it's your craft, whether it's how you treat mm. people. Like it, you, we can always be better at what we do. It's it, it, I try not to get complacent with things like that. Yeah, and and one thing that I'm really impressed about when I see your videos is that uh, there is like a um, a certain amount of movements that a Lego figure can do. But I often see in your videos, I often see them do different move, moves that I didn't thought was possible. Like there was some uh, hockey player putting his uh, stick between his legs, for example. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you do those things? It, it's creative problem solving. I had the same problem the other day when I was like, how can I make this Lego look like he's swimming and emerging out of yeah. the water? And I, and I didn't know how I was going to do it. And a lot of it's trial and error. But the hockey stick between the legs, I had no idea how I was going to do that. But I knew that that's, that was the moment that I wanted to recreate. Mm. I think it was Carlson that's, that scored a goal for the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, yeah. And he, went, he did that move where he put it between his legs. And I'm like, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. But I'll like tear their limbs off. Like I'll just pop their mm-hmm. arms off. Like, And then... And then I'll use putty sometimes to make it go in. And that's the way that I make the goalies like drop down into the butterfly. Like I'll pop their limbs off and then I'll and then I'll set it up to where it looks like they're going down to make a save. And it just looks so much more realistic, especially with the hockey stuff. Mm. Cause that was my favorite sport growing up. And so I'm like, I have to make this look as real as possible. And and even if it's like Marc Andre Fleury taking a drink from like the the water bottle and where the water just kind of seeps down afterwards yeah. like those types of details just i i love kind of that creative problem solving yeah. i didn't like solving like problems in math or mm. anything like that growing up but creatively if i can solve a problem mm. it just feels so good afterwards where you're just like oh that looks so much better than i thought it was going to look but i i kind of had in my mind how i wanted yeah. it to look and and sometimes it's not as good as I wanted it to look in my mind, but most of the time I'm like, oh, that actually turned out better than what I thought. Mm. But you have to just do it. Like you have to just try instead of trying to get it perfect. You have to make mistakes. So like like we talked about before, where failure should be the goal, mm. not not something that you uh, don't want to happen. You should you should want to fail at things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when you mentioned about the water bottle, that's also something that I've been thinking about, like everything that has water included, basically, like, yeah, it it looks like it's something uh, dripping off or something like do you glue that in place? Or how do you like do that? So I usually use like a double sided tape. Mm -hmm. And I'll just kind of I'll cut a little piece Uh off of it. And sometimes I'll cut up the the Lego so that it looks smaller than just like a round piece because the round pieces are usually the ones. Let's see if I've got one here. Hang on a second. Like these these round pieces. I don't know if you can see it. Um, that's usually as small as you can get. Mm-hmm. And so I'll just take like an exacto knife and like cut that up. Like I'll I'll, I'll take something like this and just like chop that in half or chop it into right. quarters. And that way it looks smaller and so it looks like it looks like a drop of water as opposed to just being a big giant glob of water so it's yeah it's just really just trying to figure out like how am i going to make this work even with like building stuff like i did something for nascar for the daytona 500 and i had no idea how to make like lego doesn't make nascar cars and i wanted it to look like what a nascar car actually i have one right here I wanted it to look like it, so I had to like 
get like custom printing mm. on it. And then I had to kind of just figure out how I was going to make the car look like an actual NASCAR. Right. And, and it took me a lot of different um, iterations to, to figure out what was going to look like an actual NASCAR. And then they turned out great, but it took a long time to figure that out. Same with mm. golf, like trying to make the green look a different color than, and then have the little hole in it. And even where it's like he he can only use one hand on the club. People are like, why is the golfer only using one hand? So now I'm trying to figure out how I can make the golfer look like he's holding the club with two right. hands so that it can look even more realistic. Um, but yeah, I mean, those creative problem solving things are, I'm, I'm sure you experience it a lot when you're trying to do transitions in mm. videos and when you're trying to like figure out how can I do this and how can I tor- tell this story better yeah. through, through my editing. And that's where you find the story usually is in the edit. Yeah. Like anytime I film stuff, it's like, I, I look forward to the edit part of it where I'm like, okay, how can I tell this mm. story? And then you just, and that's what people care about. They care about the stories. And like, that's why we sit around campfires when we go camping and people tell mm. stories and with Halloween, they tell ghost stories, you know, it's everybody loves the story and that like the story should come first. And that, and that's what I try to, to, to do when I'm telling stories too, is like, how can I make this story better? Um, and, and even telling my own story, like coming on platforms like this and kind of talking about how how I got to where I am now, yeah. and 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 I don't think this is necessarily the pinnacle of where I'm going to be. I think I think it's going to keep going, and and I don't know if this is something I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I may one day get sick of this and and decide this isn't what I want to do anymore and and do something else. But the the doors that this has opened yeah. are just crazy. Like I never thought that I would have gotten to to be able to do and do the things that I've been able to do from doing what I do. Yeah. And do you also also think that um, with the stories, like um, that the details matters? Absolutely. I think, I think that's, I think that's what sets me apart as an animator is, is taking care of those tiny details and even things that people don't necessarily think about that's what I think about. And even if I'm like, nobody's even going to notice this part, but it has to be this way for me. Otherwise it's going to bother me that I didn't get that detail. And sometimes I'll leave little details out that I would have liked to have put in just for time constraints. Um, but yeah, the, the details, what, how do they, what's the saying? The devil is in the details. Mm. It really does like, and that's not necessarily a negative thing. That's, that means that, that the details are what matter like that is that's how you're going to set yourself Mm. apart and the i mean we should we should care about the details but yeah especially with storytelling yeah and i've noticed that myself like when i start to follow new people on youtube that a lot of times i i've been looking like maybe a couple of minutes or even a couple of videos and then i like see a detail in the video and that specific detail that shows up in two seconds that uh, makes me want to subscribe to that person oh for sure yeah no as a as a creator um you notice things too especially Mm. with like video editing like some of the things that people do i'm just like how did they do that that's just amazing and i have no idea how to do it um but I just think it's cool. Even the transitions, like you'll watch like something that Peter McKinnon does where he like comes up to the, to the camera and then it like transitions into the next piece. And you're just like, Oh, that I've never thought of doing a transition mm-hmm. that way. And, it, and you just kind of get inspired by those things. And you're like, I wonder if I could do something like that. And it usually ends up not looking as good as what mm-hmm. they do. Um, but, but if you practice more and more at it, then you can perfect those types of things too. Yeah. But yeah, the, the I mean, the details matter so yeah. much. And, and that's what makes a good story, too, is, is those types of details. If you think about, like, Breaking Bad, like, just the, the amount of detail that that they went into with that stuff. And, and even, like, watching Better Call Saul mm-hmm. and how they're, like, talking about why those details mattered, where they, had they not continued that story, you wouldn't have known why that detail yeah. mattered. You would have just thought that it was just some of the, something that they randomly put mm-hmm. in there, but it matters to them. 
and and there's a reason why and and if you can keep telling the story and like kind of what's the word i'm looking for like have something to go off of and to um expand on that story then then it makes it an even better story yeah and i i think that um that's a good way to to round up this live uh, i know the time is running away but it was super fun to have you as a guest here and to hear about a little bit about your your process and how you're working with with the stuff that you do and and how you've gotten to where you are yeah man thanks for having me on it's been cool to kind of see your progression too and and watch from afar um but hopefully someday our paths cross where we can actually meet in real life um maybe that'll be at yeah. Vayner media someday <laughs> when uh when project vayner comes to fruition and 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 you're working for gary i just i i, I look f i don't know why that excites me <laughs> so much for somebody else yeah. to have success at that but i just it just for the story alone just yeah. to hear like how that came about and knowing what i know and see having seen what mm -hmm. i've seen um it it that yeah, i just get super excited for it but yeah reach out to people on mm -hmm. his team and even if you just get one person on his team i think I think you'll just think it's so cool yeah. and they just give you perspective that you're just like, wow, I had no idea that it, that it was actually like that. I'd heard that, but like to hear it from somebody mm. that actually is in the thick of it, it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I will uh, try to get one of the, the guys on his team. I mean, I would like yeah, to I would reach, reach out to Zane for sure. <laughs> I think Zane would be, yeah. would be the best one to get yeah. first just because he's still pretty new. Um, but even getting like his videographers, like Caleb mm. is just like the nicest person. Same with Jason. Yeah. Like both of those guys were just like sweethearts where I was just like, and we talked about it. We we're like, Caleb kind of looks like a scary dude yeah. that you wouldn't necessarily want to approach. <laughs> um, but he's not like that at all. Like he's such a nice yeah. guy and you're just like, wow, this, that was not what I expected. Like you definitely don't want to judge a book by their cover yeah. because, um, because you can be way off and you can miss out on on really cool people if you do yeah, that yeah yeah for sure and um uh dustin as well that is working there super funny guy yeah <laughs> yeah all, all all those guys there it's yeah, yeah they've they've got a good thing going yeah. there all right but uh i can't wait until you're a part of it sorry i said i can't wait until you're a part of what they've got oh, yeah. going there yeah me too and back to the back to the story again like having something cool to look back at and, and to tell and not just like get a job like that to actually right yeah the fact that you struggled and you're just like this was my goal this is what i set mm. out to do like even if it never happens like the fact like the people that you've gotten to meet along mm. the way and yeah. like when i meet people who are fans of gary vaynerchuk like we connect right away because yeah. we both have that in common mm. And usually when people are fans of Gary and they're like, dude, you got to play bubble mm. hockey with him. That's like, it's, they're just like, I never would have thought of that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, it was just kind of what, I, what came to me at the time. And that was, I, I never expected that I, that I would be going out to New York though, mm. to do it. And, and I can, and I look forward to the, uh, to my rematch with Gary when I, whenever that happens, maybe you'll be the one videoing be it. Sick. <laughs> I, ra I ran into Babin. He was one of the guys filming yeah. it, him and D rock. And I ran into him at Vid Summit, and we talked mm. for a little bit, and it was just cool to see him going on and doing yeah. other things. But yeah, rematch. If you, when you're working for Gary, that's when I want my rematch, yeah. <laughs> and I'll win this time. Yeah. The next time I play, I'm gonna win. That's that's a good uh, like cliffhanger to leave the episode with. <laughs> yeah, Gary, if you're watching this, I'm ready for my yeah. rematch, and. David's going to come out from Sweden to film it. He's going to be yeah. my D-Rock. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and uh, for everyone that is uh, watching, uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you want to get in contact with Jared, I will put the, his uh, social media handles down in the description so you can find him there. Um, but I think you're gold yeller, both on Instagram and YouTube, right? Yeah, everywhere. Right. Yeah, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. That's pretty much where I live. All right. 
Okay, so thanks for today and hope to see you guys in the next episode. Bye.